Good evening, church. This is Pastor Scott here. Uh, just excited about what we're doing, this new journey. Uh, I am personally excited that we are launching something new, something that's never been done here in Barstow, California. Uh, and I'm excited that you're a part of it. Uh, we're, we're trying to accomplish uh, growing and advancing the kingdom of God. And I believe tonight you being a part of this and stepping out with us on this new exciting journey, I believe by the end of this series, you are going to be uh, blessed and, and in a better place with God. Uh, I believe in connect groups uh, simply because there's a dynamic that takes place in this setting that can't happen in a church service. Uh, I love church. I grew up having traditional church service. But it's here in a connect group that uh, other information can be applied, other ways uh, of, of uh, being, being there for one another can be applied. As, as, as my wife talked about on Sunday night, about uh, going house to house, breaking bread. I believe that God is, is pleased with this direction that we are going in. Uh, Connect Groups is a place where we can discuss uh, topics and work some things out in our life. I believe that in the safety of real friendships, we can not only be real, but we can see real change. And I hope, uh, I, I hope tonight that as you are going to, through our very first Connect Group, uh, that you will understand that we're trying to build some real relationships with you and your group. Uh, three things can happen in this Connect series, and I hope that it happens for you. Uh, number one, a, a Connect group is a place to connect with other people. Uh, I was thinking as I was praying and, and getting ready for this lesson, we often connect with people in other areas of our life and fail to remain connected to the church family. Uh, when that happens, uh, the church family doesn't become family. And my, my, my goal here at the end of this series is to help you understand that we're more than just a group of people that meet together on a Sunday morning. But we pray for you during the week. Uh, we fast for you. We believe in you. We encourage you. We want you to know that we are your church family. Uh, number two, a connect group is a place to feel protected. I pray that over the next several weeks, your group, will, your, your particular connect group, will be a place that you feel is a shelter for your life and that you can carry that over to the church. That the church, the Bible says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it. We want church and the connect groups to be a place of shelter. Number three, a connect group is a place where you can grow. This series is for you to step into the place God wants you to be. And we, as, as Christians, and of course, according to the Word of God, call that spiritual growth. And God doesn't want you to remain the same, uh, but He wants you to step into something new and fresh and, and exciting. Every time uh, you, you come into His presence, every time you hear His Word, we are to, not only to, we're, we're not trying to advance the kingdom, grow the kingdom, but we are trying to grow you as an individual as well. Bottom line is we make each other better. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens one another. I, I want to encourage you today that it's good to have discussions. To, tonight, there's going to be a few questions that it, are going to be uh, brought out. And these, these uh, questions are not meant to target or put anybody in, a, in, in, in an awkward position or place, but to begin to discuss things. And when you discuss things with your brothers and sisters uh, in a non-judgmental uh, place, uh, you, you, you can work some things out in your life. And that, that, that's what this series is, is focusing, on, focusing on, is getting uh, a, fresh, uh, a breath of fresh air in your life. My wife and I see the value of Connect Groups. Uh, the value that they bring to everyone, I believe, is, is going to be rewarding. Uh, there's uh, several areas in, in, uh, that, that my wife and I have discussed about, and we believe that Connect Groups is going to fine-tune not only you uh, as a member of the church, but it's also going to help grow leaders 
and fine tune some areas in, in our leadership to where we can step out and be more effective in the kingdom of God. Um, real life change happens in the context of real life relationships. This series that we are going into is called Fresh Air. I believe in this society, especially coming out of the pandemic uh, with uh, all the propagandas and agendas that's going across our, our uh, political platform at this moment, uh, and now it's uh, breaching into the arena of, of the religious world, and now uh, the religious world is becoming divided. Uh, we need a breath of fresh air as a, as a Christian, as a woman of God, a man of God. You need to be able to step back and say, I need to refocus. I need to uh, get my, my, I always say, my nose and my toes headed in the right direction, in the same direction. Uh, and I believe we need to step back, especially after coming out of this two-year pandemic. Uh, and it's, it's, it's put a mindset on our, on our, um, in our homes and our families. And I prayed and, and fasted about this series, and I believe this is what God wants us to go into. I believe there are people going through the motions with duty and obligations as the motivation of waking up each day. Uh, instead of experiencing a vibrant and exciting life, we have to, we, we have to uh, make sure that uh, we're, not, we're not just doing this because it's our duty. We're not living for God because it's, it's our duty. We're not praying and fasting because it's our duty. We're not uh, leading our kids closer to God because it's just our duty. We have to understand that this is, uh, we, that when we're living for God, we're exper experiencing vibrant and exciting real life. The Bible says the God of this world has blinded people. Uh, and I believe that that is up to us to understand that God's the one that can pull the blinders off. God's the one that can unveil. And I, I want you to understand this series, a fresh air series, is to get you out of a rut. I mentioned this earlier, uh, and this is out of a book, uh, God's Armor Bearer, Terry Nance. We must be careful not to get in a rut. A rut is simply an elongated grave. Someone else quoted this, the only difference between a rut and a grave are the dimensions. Sometimes we get so discouraged and we get caught up in life and this people care about me and, and our mindset begins to change and no longer without realizing we say we believe in God. We say we believe in his power. We say we believe in his word. But without realizing we get caught up in a rut. We get caught, caught up in, in, in a place that if we're not careful can become our grave. And I, I as your pastor, I, I desire you to walk uh, in freedom. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We don't have to be bound. Our mind doesn't have to be bound. Uh, we're, we're, we're set free. We're made free. God has, has, has made us new. All things become new. And my, I, I want, I want to bring you into this series to, to let you know that it's more than just a duty that God God can come down in your life and you can have a breath of fresh air and you can wake up each morning with an, uh, a fresh mind. You can wake up each morning with fresh determination and understand that God is going to bring you through this life. We understand that, that it's not just motivation, but if motivation is wrong, uh, then you're just going through the motions. Something has to motivate you. If motivation is wrong and you're just going through the motions in your marriage, in your job, in your finances, or your spiritual life, there is no internal air propelling the experience. You're going to end up deflated, flat, exhausted, and empty. My hope in this series is that you recover fresh air if you're feeling like that. Imagine what it would be like if there was a breath of fresh air in your marriage, your money, your attitude, what would, what would it be like in all these areas if something new and fresh was going on? Imagine how your Facebook posts would change, your social media posts would change, how you treated your kids, how you interacted with your 
your spouse, your kids, your church family. Someone quoted this, and I, I, I believe, I, I, I love this. If I find that even small changes sometimes can jog you out of a mental rut. Sometimes we don't even understand we're in a rut or see that we are in a rut. And just a small change, like a connect group, saying I'm going to connect with my church family more than just Sunday. For the next seven weeks, I'm going to connect with my church family. And this small change, I guarantee you, if you apply everything that we're going to go through in this series, just a small change can jog you out of a mental rut. Uh, someone else quoted this, change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. Nobody else is can... can uh, get you to the place where God wants you to be unless you desire God for, for, for God to get you there. No one else can, can say the words for you. No one else can make the commitment. No one else can be faithful for you. You're the one that has to do that. And if, if you want change to come in your life, stop waiting on others to change around you. Let God change you. Let change come from within. Have you ever said, that I need to step out for a breath of fresh air. As I was at my desk earlier today, uh, I was thinking about this very simple concept. And it's simply this, a breath of fresh air is stepping outside of where you are at. Being in another place is the only way you're able to get a breath of fresh air. There's been times uh, where, where, where I've had to step out of a room. There's been times where I've had to step away from my computer. There's been times I just need a breath of fresh air. Uh, sometimes it helps to go on a little drive just to break the monotony of things. And we do those things on a, on a physical uh, basis. But spiritually, if we don't step out of where we are, we're always going to see God in the dimension where we're at. And this breath of fresh air is to get you to see God in another dimension, to see him for who he wants you to see him as. So let God draw you out of the place where you're at. Let God place you in an in a area, in a dimension where you can get a breath of fresh air. This series is going to help point you in the direction you need for a breath of fresh air. To step out of where you are and into a place where God desires you to be. I want to encourage you to do a few things over the next few weeks, six, seven weeks that we're, we're meeting. Uh, Connect groups will end on March 16th. But I want to encourage you to do a few things. Commit to faithfully attending these Connect groups. I want to reiterate that. I want to put an exclamation on that. Commit to faithfully attend these connect groups. Number two, commit to participate in these groups. Don't just come and be a bystander, just where you're present, raise your hand, call your name, I'm here. No, I want you to be a participator. I want you to get in, involved in the discussions, involved in the fellowship, involved with being one with being uh, together with one another. So commit to faithfully attend, commit to participate in the group over the next several weeks. And I guarantee you there will be a breath of fresh air that will flow into your life and it will have a drastic change, a positive change in your life and how you interact with those around you. I want to thank you again for going on this journey with us. We desire for you to connect together and grow together with your church family. Lord bless each and every one of you.